Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Welcome to Module 2. Now, if you remember, what we did in Module 1 is we talked about this new phenomena, that one that we haven't talked about so far in this course, namely of currents that are driven by a temperature difference. And the point I made is that although it's a new phenomena, ones that we haven't discussed before, the basic framework is already there, namely this basic expression that we had obtained earlier, namely current depends on F1 minus F2. So basically, although we are talking of temperature driven current, it's really driven by the difference between the two Fermi functions. With voltages, it was the Fermi functions differed because it was the electrochemical potential that was different. Now we are talking of a case where the temperatures are different. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is this, this module will try to get a little quantitative, and so it will be a bit of math now. If you remember, one thing that we had done back in week one was we said that when you have a small voltage difference, we could expand this to look like some conductance, some effective conductance times this voltage, mu1 minus mu2 over q. You know, this mu's, these are the electrochemical potentials, those are the units of energy. If you divide it by the charge on an electron, that's like voltage. And usually if, say, this is one milli electron volt difference, then the corresponding voltage is like one millivolt. And we had obtained an expression for G. And you may recall that expression, but what I'll do is we'll just go through that quickly so you kind of see how we got that. And the way we got it was the following. We started from here. Let me use a red pen. And we said that let's write it as instead of F1 minus F2, we view that as F of E comma mu1 minus F of E comma mu2. So it's like you have a function of two variables, E and mu, and that's the function of two variables, E and mu. And if this difference between mu1 and mu2 is small, then what you could do is use this idea of a Taylor series expansion. That is, this is equal to, approximately equal to, the derivative del f del mu times mu1 minus mu2. So you look at how fast this function changes with mu and then multiply it by how much the mu changed. If you're uncomfortable with that, one way to see this is take this quantity on the right and divide the left by that. So kind of divided by mu1 minus mu2. And then you can see that as mu1 minus mu2 tends to zero, this would be sort of like the definition of the derivative. Anyway, so I guess you have seen this before, so I won't belabor this point. So this is what we had done earlier, okay? Now, now what we have is an additional thing, which is the temperature. So you have a T1 here and a T2 there. And we could accommodate that in this discussion simply by adding another term, which looks like del F del T times T1 minus T2. See? So this is what we had done earlier. And now we are adding this extra term there, the del F del T times T1 minus T2. And when we do that, what we'll find is that this expression from which we had earlier obtained a conductance times voltage, now you'll get an additional term here. Which we call G sub S times the T1 minus T2. Okay. 
So question is, what does this expression for the conductance look like? Now this is where we could go back, I guess I can take this off for the moment. So I could, what we had done before was I showed that this partial with respect to mu can be written as the negative of the partial with respect to energy. And let me show you how I did that because then you will also see what to do with the partial with respect to temperature. We will show that this too can be written as negative of the partial with respect to E but then multiplied by some factor and the question is what that factor is. So the way we are going to do this is, again let me just write the expression for F again. So I will write it over here. So this quantity, let us think of as some quantity x. So then when I want the derivative with respect to let us say mu, you would write it something like this, del f del mu is equal to df dx, you first take its derivative with respect to x and then multiply it by the derivative of x with respect to mu. Okay. And since x is equal to E minus mu over kt, I guess you can see that del x del mu uh, looks like 1 over kt. Now if you look at partial of f with respect to energy, you could say the same thing. We will do df dx and then we will have partial of x with respect to energy. Now one little thing I missed here, there should be a minus because you see there is this minus sign there. So when I take the partial of x with respect to mu, I get minus 1 over kt. Now when I take partial of x with respect to E, however, I get plus 1 over kt. And that immediately shows you that the partial with respect to mu is the negative of the partial of respect to E. And that is the result that I had earlier mentioned. See? And this is what we had used earlier to obtain an expression for G, if you remember from week 1. The expression we had for G looked something like G is equal to integral DE minus del F del E G of E. This is the expression we had earlier and the reason we had the del F del E was because we had the partial with respect to mu replaced by partial with respect to E. That is what we had done earlier. Okay. Now the question is when you want to do GS, what should, you, what, what should we get? And the answer you can kind of see, you see, because now we are dealing with this partial with respect to temperature. Okay. So if you come back to here, the way you do partial with respect to temperature is take df dx and then you want the partial of x with respect to temperature. And if you look at the expression for x, when you take the partial with respect to temperature, what you get is E minus mu over kt square, I guess with a minus sign. And so now you notice that, I guess we do not need this one anymore. So compared to df dE then, what we have is an extra factor of E minus mu over T. So we can write del F del T as E minus mu over T 
times minus del F del E. Whereas last time we had partial with respect to mu and that was just negative of partial with respect to E. This time it's a little more complicated. Partial with respect to temperature is this negative partial with respect to E, but then multiplied by E minus mu over T. And so what happens then is when we try to find the expression for Gs, it follows much the same thing as before. But now we pick up an additional factor of E minus mu over T. It's G of e. This is G of E like before, but then I have this additional factor of E minus mu over Q T. So it's E minus mu over T because of what we just discussed and the extra Q is because, well here there was this Q, whereas here there is no Q. So if you do this carefully, you'll see that the extra factor is this. So what we have done then mathematically is we started from the same expression that we had back in week one. And earlier in week one, we had expanded with respect to, we had done this expansion in terms of a small mu difference in mu. That's for voltage driven currents. And now we want to also describe temperature driven currents. And for temperature driven currents, we have this additional term here, this Gs over T1 minus T, Gs times T1 minus T2. And the expression difference you'll notice, conductance involved and averaging over energy as we discussed with this dfde function. So when you look at dfde, typically as a function of energy, if there's a chemical potential somewhere here, as you know, the derivative of f with respect to e looks something like this. It has a peak right around the electrochemical potential and has a width of a few kT. So that's this function. But when you try to find this addition, this temperature coefficient, what you find is there's this additional factor E minus mu over T. And mathematically you'll notice that this function changes sign. If E is greater than mu, it's positive. If E is less than mu, it's negative. So when I evaluate this quantity, if all the conduction involves energies below mu, then I'll get a negative number. If it involves energies above mu, I'll get a positive number. And this is of course what we had argued physically in the first module. I tried to explain why the current reverses direction. And this is like mathematically it expresses the same thing. So when we get quantitative results from this, it will go along with the physical description we had before. So let me write this result here for future reference so we can come back to it. And then maybe I'll put it up there. So it's, so the expression we are having is something like this. You see, integral DE minus del F del E and that function if you remember as a function of energy looks like this. This is where it is. So this is minus del F del E and then if you want conductance you multiply it by G of E and you are done. That's it. If you want, so if you multiply by like 1, that will give you the regular conductance. Now, if you multiply it by E minus mu, try to find a better pen here, E minus mu divided by QT that will give me this new coefficient we just came up with, namely the Gs. It will give you that one. So those are the two we have discussed so far. 
Next module we'll talk about two more and we'll come back to it. But let me just put this up here for reference so you remember this. Now getting back then, so I've got this information already up there. So the basic expression then is current is G times this plus GS times that. So you could write it something like this, I is equal to G times delta V plus GS times delta T. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that when you actually do experimental measurements, what you tend to measure is the open circuit voltage. That is, you take one of these materials and have a temperature difference across it and you'd see what is the voltage of this effective battery, this open circuit voltage that it develops. And for that, you see, it is a little more convenient to turn this around and write it in the following form. You see, I've got the current on this side and the voltage on that, and that's what came naturally from the theoretical description. But it's a little more convenient when interpreting experiments to write it the other way. That is, put the delta V on this side, write 1 over G times I minus GS over G times delta T. Because now what you can see is that if you want the open circuit voltage, you see open circuit means current is zero. So if you had open circuit, you can drop that. And so the voltage you'd get would be proportional to the temperature. And this quantity here, minus GS over G, would be your Seebeck coefficient. And as we discussed, if you have an n-type conductor where most of the conduction takes place above the electrochemical potential, then GS is positive. Conductance, of course, is always positive. But for n-type materials, these are both positive. And so the Seebeck coefficient actually is negative. And that is the general convention, that n-type materials has a negative Seebeck coefficient. Okay? And how would you calculate this? Well, if I know the conductance function, then we know how to calculate G. And as we discussed before, and we'll come back to this, these equations that I summarized here, the first one tells you how to calculate G, the second one tells you how to calculate the GS. And we'll come back and look at that later. And the point I wanted to make here is that in order to make contact with experiment, usually what you're looking at is this ratio this GS over G, that although from the theory point of view, this is the description that comes naturally, namely current as a function of voltage and temperature. When comparing with experiments, this second form is more natural with the voltage on this side and the current on that side. So this coefficient I wrote here, GS, doesn't have a name actually. I mean, I mean there's no, no standard convention for what symbol to use either. On the other hand, this quantity GS over G has a name, Seebeck coefficient, you know, the person who first measured it many years ago. And this is what you would normally write as S. And if you did a Google search on different materials and you look for it, they would tell you what this Seebeck coefficient is. That's the quantity you'd be looking at and seeing how it compares with experiment. Now, what we'll do in the next module then is talk about another related effect related to the Seebeck, that any material that so shows a Seebeck effect also shows something called a Peltier effect. And I'll try to explain why and relate these two coefficients. So that's what we'll do in the next module.